Hello guys, this is Code02Gaming and welcome to another Dragon Nest mobile video. As you may have already known, I have a series of Adept PvP montages where I make the Adept look OP. And if you want to find more about it, you can find it here. In this video, however, I'll be teaching you guys the secrets of PvPing as an Adept. I'm going to explain the ins and outs of how the Adept works in detail, how to build an Adept to kill, and how to win fights as an Adept in ways other players cannot imagine. Well, of course, at least until the day this video is released. Firstly, what is an Adept anyway? Adept is a high-burst mid-range caster class whose specialty is utilizing their magma skills to deal burning damage to their foes. You should play this class if you enjoy medium risk, high reward playstyles. The reason why this is considered medium risk is because, contrary to what many may think, Adepts are a fairly safe class to play in melee if you know what they're doing. Of course, the downside is that you do get punished very badly if caught, as Adepts don't have a very strong recovery strategy. The best way to play this class is to abuse its ability to take the fight straight to the opponents in devastating melee combos and counter-engage or kite in mid-range. If you have watched my previous videos, you would know that this is my Adept PvP build. In fact, I have started to use this build extensively since I have unlocked Magma Leap, shortly after the Dark Avenger patch. However, from what I know, this build is not used by most other Adepts. Most of the Adepts I've seen adopted Summon Alfredo and Magma Flow into their builds. Some of them even brought out Big Liar for the double summon shenanigans. While this may work for them, it does not bring out the true flavor of the Adept and locks out its true damage potential. Now, I will explain the build in detail. First skill I will explain is Magma Step EX, a simple series of three Magma Fists launched at once, which knocks up anyone in front of you within the Fist range. It has a 10 second cooldown and has a total of 6.3 to 6.6k damage, a 4.2 to 4.5k attack on the first hit, and 5 ticks of 420 fixed burn damage over time. This is a bread and butter in most combos due to its fast animation and decent cooldown. This skill naturally chains into Ice Step and can chain from both Ice Step and Dodge which means that you actually have a degree of safety and flexibility when using this skill. Take note of its range. You will see how this can be utilized to its full potential later on in this video. Next up on the list is Magma Wall EX, where you create a circular wall of magma totems around you, knocking up enemies within its radius. The totems explode shortly after, staggering everything within range. This skill does a total of 5k, with both of its hits dealing about 2.5k each. This damage is fairly low for a 15 second cooldown skill. However, Magma Wall earns a place in my build due to it being able to engage from weird angles and its stagger range being deceptively wide, allowing for sneak attacks to happen. The second hit also usually happens before the enemy reaches the ground from the knockup so you won't get ground counted on the combo. The third skill I will look at is Ice Beam EX, where you cast a targeted beam, freezing the target in place. This skill is strong for its cooldown at 17 seconds, with 13.5k average damage over the first 10 hits and a 900 on the last bonus attack, totaling about 15k. This bonus attack is unique in a sense that it is a projectile that travels further than the actual ice beam, which can be used to stagger unsuspecting players. Although the freeze has been nerfed to 1 second, it gives enough time for you to cast Magma Wall or Magma Step to continue the chain. You should be using this skill if you are playing an adept, as this defines the class. Fourthly, we have Magma Leap, 
the awakening skill of the adept. This skill propels you forward with magma, leaping a huge distance in the process and staggering anyone within the magma range. Magma Leap has a 30 second cooldown, which is quite long. However, Magma Leap is worth its cooldown as you get a 1 second of invulnerability on the start of the cast, and it can be chained from most skills in the Adept's arsenal, therefore it is an extremely flexible awakening skill. Although using it as a mobility skill tends to turn it into a fairly poor damage skill, chaining the multiple hits of Magma Leap can result in a devastating 10 to 12k burst damage when fully stacked. It is much easier to chain Magma Leap from a skill that causes a knockout effect, but don't be afraid to chain it from any skill you know that it can win you the fight. The last offensive skill on my list deserves its own section due to its sheer complexity. Eject is a skill from the position tree and consists of two parts. The first part is the charge part, where you charge forward with a syringe. The second part is the vacuum skill, which pulls enemies in range towards you. This does about 8k damage for a 9 second skill, split over 5 attacks of 1.6k each. While the proficiency of Eject EX is what defines the skill level of a physician, Eject is akin to a Swiss army knife in this adept build due to its innate synergy with adept skills. Eject can be used to maintain ground locks, air locks, catch escaping players, combo, you name it. You can even dodge cancel with this skill by pressing the dodge button instead of the attack button. This allows you to move across the field quickly, catching up to enemies from far away and performing tricky escapes. While Eject is a very strong skill, it won't shine without the help of the entire kit. This skill fills up the last slot of my PvP build and it's a skill that makes this build so consistent. Now we'll look at Adept's support skills. In this video, we will not cover dodging and recovery skills as they are similar to the other classes. Instead, we will focus on the skills that are unique to Adept's, which are the offensive support skills and class masteries. First up is Ice Step EX. This skill can be casted by pressing the attack button after dodge or magma step. This skill first creates 3 Ice Fists, punching forward twice, staggering the target, and getting a short iframe on the first punch. This skill has a 10 second cooldown, and does about 3.7k damage. 2.7k on the first one, and 1k on the second. Remember that you can cast Magma Step right after Ice Step if it's not on cooldown. This is your iframe extender or counter stagger too. Similar to Magma Step, Ice Step is also used in most combos, although you have to be careful with one less iframe to work with when this is used. A good way to remember this cooldown is to remember when you last cast Ice Step in contrast to Magma Step as they have the same cooldown. The other offensive support skill on the list is Gas Concentrator. This can be done by pressing dodge during the dodge animation. When casting the skill, a burst of toxic gas appears below you, pushing yourself up and gaining a short iframe and also knocking enemies up at the same time. At any point before you land, you get a free reset on dodge, and using the skill early stops the knockout effect. With an 8 second cooldown, this does a total of about 6.6k damage, with about 4.5k damage on the first 7 hits at the start, and like Magma Step, 5 ticks of 420 damage over time. You will see me use this to combo from knockup skills very often as it drags enemies further up, making the critical point of eject possible. Use this skill as often as you want to be aggressive and dish out high damage combos, however do note that it is also one of your very few defensive options as an adept. Now we will look at the class masteries of an adept. Only class mastery 1 and 2 are relevant for PvP as the passive awakening skills are not usable in most PvP scenarios. Class mastery 1 is simple. You get 10% bonus damage for 10 seconds after casting Ice Beam. This includes the Ice Beam duration itself. Regardless of that fact, 
you still have about 7 seconds to do 10% extra damage, which is huge considering the already big numbers adepts have on their skills. Simply put, if you can combo off Ice Beam, do so as you will be maximizing your combo damage during that duration. Class Mastery 2 is the mastery that should get your attention though. Class Mastery 2 gives you 20% bonus damage for 5 seconds when you successfully iframe an attack through any means. This includes support skills like Dodge and Magma Leap, an offensive skill. Although CM2's healing effect does not proc in PvP, the damage increase is insane. This is also one of the reasons why Adepts are best played in a partial reactive, partial aggressive style, as dodging enemy skills and countering them in this fashion will result in a near 100% effective CM2 uptime. This is also why it is better to have a kit revolving around having strong melee combos as they will only get stronger the better you are at dodging. Both of these masteries are not essential to know in an actual fight, but the additional damage from these masteries can turn an impossible fight in your favour. We have reached the last section of skills, the buffs and ultimate. To be honest, these skills are not as important as the other skills, as most of the time you will only be using this to complement your main skills. However, for the sake of clarity on its usage, I will still do a guide on these skills. Cocktail is the first buff I will look at. Very simply put, you drink a cocktail, gaining cooldown reduction of 30% as well as 15% bonus damage for 15 seconds. This skill can be dodge cancelled, which means you can stick in extra damage into gas concentrator mid combo. The only real use of this skill however, is to boost your damage in your all-ins or speed up key cooldowns in your combo. It isn't anything too special otherwise. The other buff skill, Waxing, is more important. When using this skill, you will place a large puddle of wax on the ground which grants you additional movement speed and damage in its radius as well as a movement speed debuff on enemies it is that in the same area. While you do get a respectable 20% damage boost from the puddle, the damage gains are nothing compared to its ability to increase your movement speed. You can take the movement speed buff off the wax for 5 seconds which can be refreshed by returning to the puddle. This allows you to catch up to opponents very quickly. Also, enemies are usually forced to iframe out of the puddle to prevent themselves from being slowed, leaving you a potential window to catch them again. While there are many ways to use this skill, adepts typically use it to chase opponents or force out dodges after an aerial combo. Last but not least, we will talk about ultimates. In my build, I use Icicle Release due to its strong slowing effect and its range being similar to Magma War. It does about 15k damage and has a 60 second cooldown, which means that most of the time you only use this once. To be honest though, it does not matter which ultimate you use. The reason why I spent so much time earlier this video explaining the rest of my build is because you don't really rely on your ultimate to do anything. And while Icicle Release is easier to combo off compared to Poison Cloud, you will probably be fine with either of these skills. TLDR, just know that your ultimate exists when its cooldown is up, and use it to secure kills, cancel enemy ultimates, or as part of your combo chain. Do not depend on it. Now that we are done with all of the skills, I will go through some tips and tricks I have learned from being in the deck. Remember at the beginning, I told you to take note of the Mustap's range? If you have noticed, this skill has the shortest effective range in your entire arsenal. However, this range is big enough for two things to happen. First and foremost, all three fists can damage the opponent, which means that sidesteps from opponents can be intercepted fairly easily with that Mustap. Secondly, this fist have a large enough range to hit past the middle statue in the arena. Since many classes actually struggle with the statue, you can use this to your advantage. In fact, Eject 
I step and magma wall can also hit across the statue reliably. This means that if the situation allows for it, you can try to trap the opponent at the statue for free damage. Opponents will most likely not be able to deal with a free combo as there is no easy way to counter a trap of this kind. Of course, most decent players will not deliberately go to the middle of the field to let you perform this trap. You have to bait them into misplaying their engages to pull this off. As for the haters who wish statues are removed, get good. Just kidding, but seriously. The second tip is about the critical point of eject. Earlier in this video, I've talked about the critical point of eject briefly, but have not explained what the critical point means. The critical point of eject is the point of which you can cast eject and the opponent will take full damage while still being mid-air from an aerial combo. Knowing the critical point is important as adapts do more aerial combos than ground combos. Eject usually works by pulling enemies towards you and enemies can use their ground recovery to escape. However, if you damage your opponent while the enemy is at their critical point or above, the enemy gets locked in air, preventing them from using their ground recovery skills and allowing you to continue the combo with knockup skills. You can easily get to the critical point through Gas Concentrator, and since Gas Concentrator has a fairly low cooldown, just remember to use Gas Concentrator before eject if you want to continue an airlock. Last but not least, do not be afraid to put pressure from the very beginning. While you have 3 gap closers, gas concentrator, magma leap and eject, this build is fairly weak to pure runners because there's no real way to catch them if they manage to stay on the other side of the map. As much as safely possible, keep yourself at close proximity of your opponent. One trick to do this is optimizing the start of every fight. In almost all of my matches, I start by moving to the center of the field. Eject is very volatile and can attack from any angle, so going to the center increases your offensive potential drastically. From there, it is all about knowing when to eject cancel, magma leap, or using dodge ice step to do your initial engage. I'm not saying go ham to your opponent 100% of the time, as there are many occasions where you have to retreat or you'll lose too much health. Be smart about your engages and for the most part stick to your opponent as this is where adapts shine. We have finally come to the fun part, gameplay analysis. I will talk about a few games I've played which includes the moves and decisions I need to make in each battle. I hope this will give you an insight on how to play my build optimally. Before I start my analysis, remember that practice is key and my current skill level is the end result of hundreds of hours of pure effort and learning what works and what doesn't. However, this guide should help speed up the learning process and within a few rounds, you will be able to understand what I'm saying in your own gameplay. From there, Training should be able to get you to a skill level where you too can share your adept PvP montages. The first match we will review is an Inquisitor match. Yes, we are looking at a fairly low rating battle at about 1.7k points. However, I will use this game to explain how an adept enters fights and show how adepts are really strong in close range. Inquisitor is an explosive mid-range class and you have to be careful of their lightning attacks. Most Inquisitors also bring out Bind Totem, so chasing after them in Holy Land if you are not already at melee may be a bad idea. When engaging, always take note that Thundershock has an iframe and the best answer to that skill is to dodge into the Cleric. Apart from the debuffs and their staggers, they are actually fairly easy to kill with proper timing. Let's get into the battle. As usual, I will start by going to the center of the map, as mentioned in my tips. After doing an eject, we got staggered by the Inquisitor's ground counter. Then, he cast Chain Lightning, which I have to dodge. At this point, he has a few options, to do Lightning Strike or to read the dodge, and go into their dodge attack to continue the stagger. In both cases, I know I have Ice Step and Instant Magma Step to counter, so that is my move. This is the best case scenario where there's only one answer. 
but very often you have to take risky moves be where you need to think about recoveries and whatnot. Because it's a knockup, I attempt to chain the knockup through Magma War, but he area recoveries with ease. Now that the Magma War is up and ready to explode, and he is on the ground, there are two things that we will consider. He may either dodge or cast Thunder Shock. In this case, it is pretty obvious that he will cast Thunder Shock as he this will prevent the stagger and he may consider countering me. And I was right. If I had thought my opponent would have attempted to dodge instead and try to chase, it is likely that my gas concentrator will not be used correctly and I will wouldn't be able to perform the ice beam combo right after. The rest of the fight is self-explanatory due to the massive advantage I've gotten in the first 20 seconds of the battle. The second match I will look at is a Ripper matchup at about 2.1k rating. Rippers are a very hard battle to fight as an adept, so a win from a Ripper is usually worth noting. This battle has a few key points to take note of. I will explain my thought process while in this battle and for the most part explain my rationale for the more important moves. This is one of the battles where I've decided to not compete for the center because Rippers will reach the center faster than I do. Instead, I prepare for the counter-engage instead, by ejecting forward. However, the enemy easily dodges it and lands a combo on me because of my misplay when trying to kite to mid-range. Reapers are superior in the combo department, and thus I easily lost half of my health. What he did right here was pushing me to the corner of the map, as Reapers are fairly weak near the statue. At this point, I have to consider a strategy to get back into the fight as getting chained again will result in sudden death. As such, retreating to safety has the most priority. If you have noticed, I have mixed up both offensive and defensive moves in my retreat. As Reaper is an offensive class, you do need to hoard their catch through your own offensive skills. I quickly noticed that the Reaper is trying to get me to combo through spamming skills. Having kept track of the skills, I realized he is going to cast Retribution next and time the magma wall just right. This knocks him out for the perfect ice beam play. Although he tried to cancel my skill, the area counter doesn't have a high enough super armor break. At this point, I casted both my buff skills as waxing keeps the reaper slow and cocktail helps me get to cooldowns faster. The reaper is likely tilted at this point and attempts to go at me again, which is a huge mistake as my gas concentrator is still off cooldown. A huge gas concentrator to the face is 10k damage with CM1 still ticking as well as cocktail. It also resulted in the subsequent gas concentrator hitting him, costing him the game. Moral of the story, gas concentrator is OP. It is stronger than its EX version. Just kidding, you should be able to understand how to use the adapt to punish mistakes now. I'm uploading the third battle, a 2.1k rating battle against a shooting star here for practice analysis. The goal here is to improve your problem solving as an adept and can utilize the skills you have learned here into your actual ladder battles. In this analysis, pretend you are me and think about what I should do in each situation. Pause the video whenever you need and think about what the correct solution is. This game is not perfect, so think about how I, or in this case you, can improve the fight. However, I have one rule. Do not fast forward or go backwards to find clues or the answer. This will defeat the purpose of the analysis practice. Do comment what your analysis is if you want to find out how close you are to the actual answer.
and with that, you have come a very long way to the end of this guide. I apologize for the shitty ed editing as I'm not as skilled at videos. Regardless, I thank you for taking the long time to watch this guide. If you want more help about that, there is the Dragon Nest Mobile Discord which you can find in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. But most of all, share this with your friends as adepts are a dying class and we need you guys to revive the scene.